everyone. Welcome back to the War Room. In today's Learn As We Play series, we're going to learn how to play the strategic card game for two players, Fort Sumter, created by the great Mark Herman and produced by the great GMT Games. Uh, fort Sumter, for those of you who do not know what it is, was a waterborne fort. Uh, in other words, it sits on an island in the Charleston Harbor of inside the United States. I believe in South Carolina. And that's where the Confederates attacked April 12th, 1861. And this is considered to be the first shots of the Civil War. Fort Sumter was very important. It was a Union fort. It was used during the Revolutionary War. And it was important to the Confederates because it allowed ingress and egress of supplies for the Confederates. And so they attacked in order to gain control of this region. But this game isn't about battle. It's about the political tension build up before the battle occurs. All right. Um, for those of you who play games such as um, uh, Hearts of Iron 4, you know, Paradox Interactive games, uh, before you go to war, you have to have something called Casus Belli, which is cause for war. And so this is that cause for war. You're building up the cause for war before the war happens. It's going to happen. You just have to build up um, enough political points to come out as the better person when you go to war. Because there was people that supported both sides of the uh, the um, U.S. Civil War. Some people supported the freedom of slaves. while There was people who were fighting to keep it. And so either side, you're fighting to keep or get rid of that particular uh, culture. So that's what this game is about. So let's go over some terms. You have two players. One player is gonna play as the Unionist. The Unionist believes in not dissolving the Union and not allowing the Southern states to separate from the United States. Uh, they're also fighting slavery, right? So this Cassus Belli or, or cause for war is to stop that from happening. Okay, while as the secessionist player is obviously trying to support that dying culture and they're trying to build a cause for war to attack Fort Sumter and have the better political opinion at the end of the game. Now, the first player is always going to be the Union. The Union always starts. However, after the first game play, or game turn, I should say, then it goes to the person with the most political points. This track represents the turn. Starting here, it's the first turn, second turn, third, and then final crisis. We'll discuss that later. But over here is your points track. And the points track are um, represented by two little uh, uh, circles here. you got the gray for the secessionist, blue for the union. And if you ever get past 10, which I think is a little difficult to do in this game, I've never seen it, um, you just flip them over and there's a plus 10, and you just start over on the track again if you need more points. Every one of these are called a map space. They all belong to what's called a crisis dimension. Crisis dimension is the three of the same colors, okay? Um, before I go into the crisis dimension, let's talk about the map spaces a little bit more. So the first one here is the dark blue with the star. Those are called secession spaces. The yellow with the bell are called political spaces. The red with the cannon are called armaments spaces and then the green with a little person looks like a little person on there are called public opinion spaces the three green are called a crisis dimension that belong to that public opinion space same for the red those are called crisis dimensions and the reason why you have to know that term is because you're playing with strategy cards and it may have you put influence into those crisis dimensions when someone owns all three of one color, that's a victory point. So if I have enough of these little influence cubes into a region and my opponent does not have any, okay, I'm going to have a victory point just for owning those. Now there's areas called pivotal spaces. Each crisis dimension has one and they're denoted with this white border around the edge here. For federal arsenals, this is one of them. Newspapers, border states, and then Washington. They're surrounded by that little border. If you own that region after a round, you're gonna be able to move your little tokens around the board. We'll talk about that. It's a bonus movement, it's a good thing. Next we have control, control. So if I have a token, and let's say I have it here just so you can see it better. I have a one um, secessionist token there, I own it. But as long as one's in there and it's matching the other one, no one owns it. You put another one in, then the unionists would own it. The crisis track. This is the crisis track. 
tokens, their actual name is called political capital tokens. They begin on the crisis track. You don't have possession of them. You have to play a strategy card in order to get them off of that track and use them on the board, okay? There's some good and bad to that. The more I have, the more I can control. But each section does something. It could be good or bad either way. So let's bring you over here. So on the track, you have four sections. Starting, which is here. All right. Then you have escalation, which is here. Tension. And then the final crisis track. And again, we'll get into that more as we play the game. Breach. When you take one, they're all numbered from 15 to 0 on both sides. So you start with 15, and you move your way all the way, all the way up to 0. When you take one from any of these sections, that's called a breach. Strategy cards. All right, so this is the meat and potatoes of the game, like all card-driven games. A deck of cards, each listing a value with a colored background, blue, gray, or both. All right. Um, it has an event, a title, an event, and then it has a crisis dimension at the bottom, upside down. Okay? When you start a game, you'll get four in your hand. Okay? You may get some of your own. You may get some of the other player. Or you may get one, like this one here, that has both colors. Gray and blue. It can be played by both players. If you get, if I'm the secessionist, and I've got a union card here, I cannot play it for the event. I can only play it for the value. The value allows me to take a, a capital token off of the track and place it on the board. That's it. But if I have a double, I can play this for the event as well as the other player. And then of course, I could play mine for either the value or the event, my choice. Objective cards. A deck of cards, each listing a specific location on the map and an event. An objective card's image is only for the historical flavor. Objective cards are revealed at the end of each round for victory points and under certain conditions for their event. So basically, each round, or the beginning of each turn, excuse me, you're going to get two of these. You're going to pick one, and then you're going to discard the other. Okay, And when you play, or whatever one you pick, it's going to go under here as a hidden objective. You're looking to score that objective. If you score that objective, in other words, if you, if you have more influence on the board than the other person for that objective, you're going to get whatever the card lists as your bonus. So for this example, if you play this card and control the abolitionist space, you may remove up to two tokens from any one space. That's strategy. So you, you can remove two tokens. It could be your own, and you can save them for later, or you can remove your enemies. Now, if the enemy, if, you're, if your opponent has a card, and he doesn't own it, but you own that as well, and you're not going to know what it is. But if you just happen to own it as well, you're going to get the, uh, um, the objective uh, reward for that one as well. Peace Commissioner. The Peace Commissioner, this guy, this little meeple, he's only played by event. Okay? Or if you go into the final crisis. No, I'm sorry. If you go into the tension track, that's just before the final crisis. That's a little orangey area. If you go into the tension, or you play an event, you get to place this guy anywhere on the map that you want. But when you do, let's say, Fort Pickens, no influence could go in or out. So, you know, let's say I had one in here, two in here for the Union, and the Union plays a card, he could lock down that region, and he's going to win that region. There's nothing that the secessionists can do about it. You can't put guys in or out. The only way you can move that is if you go into the tension zone or you play a card to remove him. Finally, we have the political capital tokens. Colored wooden pieces used to indicate political influence in a square. These tokens begin play on the crisis track. Once removed from the crisis track, they cycle from the player's token pool and map spaces. So they'll go on the map, okay? You might go from here to here, and you'll have a bunch, but they'll never go back to the track. They're, so, for example, this is a token pool for the secessionist. That's the token pool for the unionist. So those will go there, and they're available for use after they've been taken off the track. So now let's go ahead and set up a game for play. All right, we're going to go ahead and go right down the list. Over here in the, on the actual board, there's a sequence of play, real easy to read. The first thing you do is you give each player four strategy cards. The union, secessionist. Two three, three, four, four. Simple. Done. 
then we're going to give each player two objective cards. Okay. Each player is going to go through their hand. They're going to see what they've got. And they're going to get rid of one of their objective cards. Now, the Union just happens to have two cards, Fort Sumter and Abolitionists. Something I want to go over before I start picking these cards. All right, at the end of a round, you're going to score one VP for each crisis dimension you control. Remember, crisis dimension are all the colors on the board. So if I control all the green, I'll get a point for that. I'll also score one VP for either player's objective cards, right? So if I own it, so for example, if I, if I own one of these and I happen to own my opponent's card, you know, I, I didn't know, I just happened to own it, I'll gain benefits for both. All right, so you obviously want to go for an objective that you can reach. So I have two cards I can play for the events. Otherwise, I only have two level one value uh, you, um, secessionist cards. And, and none of these help me out with either of these cards. I'm going to go for Fort Sumter. At the end of the game, during the final crisis, Fort Sumter, if you own it, is an extra vet, uh, victory point. It's just a bonus victory point. So I'm going to go for Fort Sumter. I'll put him down here. It's hidden. There's little sections on the board that tells you where to hide the card. You put it face down. The other card is going to go away. Let's see what the secessionists have. Ah, they're not getting a lot of help. They have a lot of union cards in their hand. They've got one um, dual purpose card that they can use for the event. But they have Washington and state assemblies. Now, Washington is a pivotal space. So I think we're definitely going to go for that because my level three card, it, gets, it allows me to add up to four tokens to a political space. So this would be a great card to play um, if I'm not doing so well. So I'm going to take... Washington as a hidden objective. I'll put state assemblies away. Now we're ready to play the game. Union always goes first on the first turn, and it, then it goes to whoever has the highest victory points. If it's a tie, the Union goes again. All right. So the Union has, again, let me double check, Fort Sumter. All right. I want to play cards that are giving me stuff for Fort Sumter. I have nothing of the sort. So I'm going to go ahead and play my level three card for the value. So I will take one, two, and three. They come right off that starting track, and these are ready for play immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put one in Fort Sumter. I'll put it in Fort Pickens and Federal Arsenals. Kind of throw off my opponent, even though it's just me. All right, as a secessionist, uh, I'm going to be cautious here. I'm going to play the Major Anderson. That's a union card for two value. I'm going to take the two down here, and they're ready for play. All right, I don't like the fact that he has a pivotal space, so I'll shut that down. And I'm going to put one in Montgomery. All right. The union player is going to play two more cards. The fourth one gets saved for the final crisis. So um, let's go ahead and do Calhoun's Legacy for the value. It's only one. Let's place it right here. Okay. He's done. Secessionists. Those darn secessionists. All right. I'm going to play Abraham Lincoln. I can't play it for the event, only for the level two value. And I will take two more tokens. Let's go ahead and do Northern and Washington, Northern States, Washington. And this is the final card for this turn. So the, the Union player's got to pick a card to play, and the other card's going to be used for that armament or public opinion. It's going to be used for the crisis dimension at the bottom to be saved for the final turn. That's the fourth turn. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this for the value. And something funny is about to happen. I'm about to breach, let me put you over here. It's upside down, I apologize, but can't be helped. So I get two, one, two. So that breaches, I'm gonna use these two in the game, but these are little bonuses that are gonna be put into the token pool right over there. I can use that instead of going off the track. So the next time I breach, it's gonna go into the tension track. It'll give me three bonus points, or bonus of tokens, I should say, but the opponent gets to place the Peace Commissioner, which means this little meeple guy, he can be placed somewhere I may not want him to be because then um, tokens can't be placed in or out. So just something to think about. All right, I'm going to secure Fort Sumter. No, Fort Pickens. And let's shut down 
Washington, just to make it hard for them. And then this final card, I'm going to play for the final crisis, upside down, over here. Okay. Secessionists. All right. So uh, it's my last turn. You know what? Why not? I'm going to do number three for the, uh, I'm going to do the event. I'm going to place, add up to four tokens to political spaces just to secure the deal and have them ready. So one, I breached. Two, three, four. And these two extra ones go into the token pool and I get four to place. I'll put three in there. And the reason I'm putting three or two in there to make it three is because if I own it, I get to move those later. I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put two in Fort Sumter. I don't like the fact that he's going to Fort Sumter. My final guy is gonna be the final crisis card. After each player has played his three strategy cards for the round, the first player checks for control of each pivotal space. So the union does not control anything. He lost uh, the federal arsenals and then they put uh, two into Fort Sumter. So they don't own anyone. However, the South player did. All right, so he's gonna get one victory point for having one crisis dimension scored, okay? So now uh, he gets to do his bonus. He can move any two tokens or remove any two tokens, his or the opponent's, or he can move one token and remove a token, his or his opponent's, all right? So I am going to, and it's for that space, all right, not all over the board. Uh, I can, like I said, I can move guys over here. I can, you know, to just kind of shore up what I have, uh, or I can remove. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move a token, and I'm going to remove his token. It goes to the token pool. He can use that for later. Then we score the point, which I did a little early. Okay. Now we score our objectives cards. So let's go ahead and flip them. The South had Washington. Oh, that's a crisis. And the Unionists were looking for Fort Sumter. Okay, so they didn't get Fort Sumter, so that's gone. But the Secessionists didn't get Fort Sumter either, so nobody scores, this card's gone. We look at Washington, and the Secessionist does control Washington up there. So it says here, <clears throat> as the bonus, if you play this card and control the Washington space, you may remove up to two tokens from political or public opinion spaces. All right. So it doesn't really help me because he doesn't have anything on any of those. But this is my, obviously, an objective that I've won. And because I won that objective, I get a point. So the secessionist has two points to the unionists, zero points. So now we're going to go to the next turn. And we're going to start this all over, starting with the secessionists, because they have the most points. All right, so just for the sake of teaching the game, I, had, I went ahead and sped up the game a little bit. I, I gave some points to each side. Uh, I'm just going into the final crisis. So the game is very straightforward. You're going to play this. You're going to do it three times. And then on the final turn, that's the final crisis. And that's what we're going to go over right now. Now, there's two ways to get to the final crisis. Either you make it to turn four, or both players have breached into the final crisis. Okay? So if you've gotten into this section right here, the red part, then it goes immediately to the final crisis uh, card game, which is a separate game in of itself. All right. The first thing you do is you remove the peace commissioner from the game. Both players will take their final crisis strategy cards, gather them, and take a look at them. Keep them hidden from your opponent. Both players take their final crisis strategy cards into hand from where they were set aside in the prior rounds. If fewer than three cards are gathered this way, deal strategy cards to both players until they each have three. So again, if players go into the final crisis, the game goes right into the crisis. If you're down cards, like let's say you have one or two cards, you'll be dealt a, a free strategy card. All right, so there's the union cards. You have a couple of arm armament sections and public opinion. Okay. And the secessionists have a couple of the South states and the public opinion, or secession and public opinion, I should say. All right. Each player should secretly place his three final cards face down on the table in the order they wish to play them. First on top, last on the bottom. So the top card will be the first card I play for the secession. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to put the public opinion on top, pretending I don't know what's in that card pile. 
Both players will simultaneously reveal their first top card. So the Union and the Secessionists. Okay. So the Union revealed the public opinion. Okay. And the Secessionists revealed Secession. So the Secessionists are the first player. So he doesn't have a location that matches his opponent. So... He, I'm going to be moving up to two of my tokens from any space and or token pool into that area that matches. So if I had a couple of tokens in my token pool, I can move two into there as well. So I can go into a succession space. Here, one, two. There we go. This card's gone. Next, the union player would do the same thing. So if he has a couple of you know tokens in the token pool, or, or he could do it from the map, he can move two into any places he wants as well. So I might say, you know what, I'm going to move, and it has to be in public opinion, right? So I'm going to place them in here because the Secessionists already have a token in two out of three uh, uh, public opinion crisis dimension. I don't want them to score any points. So that card will go away. Then we'll go into the second card. Okay? Same thing, it doesn't match. So we'll go through it again. Secessionists go again. Let's see, I don't want to move from Fort Sumter because that's an extra point. So I might move one and two into public opinion. Here we go. Now I own public, well, I own two out of the public opinion places. And for blue, it's going to be red. So I think I have nowhere else to put squares. I think I'm going to leave it alone. You don't have to, you may. So I'm going to leave that alone. Final crisis. All right, let's say this is a secessionist to match. Now they match. So when each player, starting with the first player, if the, if the locations match, you must remove one of your tokens from a space of that location type or remove two of your tokens from any space or spaces. Okay? So I either remove one from the secession or I have to remove two from anywhere else. So obviously I don't want to move two from anywhere else. So I'll take one from Texas and so does the uh, union player. He's got to take one and he has one here. So one's going to go to the border states. So that ends the crisis. End of final crisis. Score one VP for each crisis dimension you control, starting with the first player. So he has one for the uh, uh, politics. He does not own the green. He never got it. He never got the red. And the blue is pretty much out of, out of sorts. One for Fort Sumter, but there's two of each in Fort Sumter, so nobody scores. All right, blue scores nothing. And then score one VP for having three or more tokens in the token pool more than your opponent. So nobody has any more tokens in the token pool, but let's say if, let's say if the secessionist had three and he had zero, that would be another point. All right, and that ends the game. That ends... Fort Sumter, and that is the winner. And this game is really quick. You could play several games of this in under an hour.